Truly God is loving unto Israel, even unto such as are of a clean heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone, my treadings had well nigh slipped, and why I was grieved at the wicked, I do also see the ungodly in such prosperity. For they are in no peril of death, but are lusty and strong. They come in no misfortune like other folk, neither are they plagued like other men. And this is the cause that they are so holden with pride, and cruelty covereth them as a garment. Their eyes swell with fatness, and they do even what they lust. They corrupt others and speak of wicked blasphemy. Their talking is against the Most High, for they stretch forth their mouth unto the heaven, and their tongue goeth through the Therefore fall the people unto them, and their outsuck they no small advantage. Touch say they, how should God perceive it? Is their knowledge in the most high? Lo, these are the ungodly. These prosper in the world, and these have riches in possession. And I said, then have I cleansed my heart in vain And washed my hands in innocency All the day long have I been punished And chastened every morning Yea, and I had almost said even as they but lo, then I should have condemned the generation of thy children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I the end of these men. Namely, how thou dost set them in slippery places And castest them down and destroyest them Oh, how suddenly do they consume Perish and come to a fearful end Yea, even like as a dream when one awaketh so shalt thou make their image to vanish out of the city. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy. A reading from the third chapter of the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent together the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, 
You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods to worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the, fire, the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of Psalm 124. If the Lord himself had not been on our side, now may Israel say, If the Lord himself had not been on our side when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive. When they were so wrathfully displeased at us, yes, the waters would have drowned us, and the stream would have gone over our soul. The deep waters of the proud would have gone even over our soul. But praised be the Lord. Our soul is escaped even as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we are delivered. Our help stands in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven and earth.
The epistle is written in the 19th verse of the 11th chapter of the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I'm speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I'm talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and, apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and, and am I not weak? Who is made to fall, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gradual hymn is number 377.
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us. Under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life. 
who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Next week uh, is the Sunday before Lent. Uh, we're going to have normal services in, but then on the 13th we'll have our uh, what we call the Bacon Tuesday, usually Shrove Tuesday. Um, on the 13th, uh, the men of the church will do the cooking and the cleaning. And it will start at 5, the dinner served at 7. Then on Wednesday, uh, February 14th, is our Ash Wednesday, Wednesday service. Uh, in the imposition of ashes, and that will begin at 7 p.m. as well. Hopefully at that service will be Father Carl's first service back. Uh, he's going to take one more Sunday off next Sunday. And then uh, no other announcements other than I think hopefully everybody knows by now, but uh, Joshua Perkins last Sunday uh, was taken to the emergency room by his wife, and uh, over a matter of time they discovered that he had had a spinal a spinal stroke, which is a very rare form of stroke, and uh, he had lost movement in his limbs, and uh, he's recovered quite well, but he's still in the hospital. Uh, there is a caring bridge link that Jocelyn had set up, uh, set up for everyone to keep track of his progress, and there's also a calendar if you want to help out with meals or, or uh, any other chores that they may need. So if you need the caring bridge link, I think you can go to like Shelly or my wife, Vanessa. We all have it, um, and uh, you know, keep in touch with them that way. So, uh, barring any other announcements, we'll go ahead and continue on with our service. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Hopefully, Father Carl will be here to do the final one of this series. Um, uh, he's, he's been sending these, this to me. So, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. Does this sound familiar? It should. We pray it every time we celebrate Holy Communion. The Collect for Purity on page 85 of the Book of Common Prayer. Today begins a series reflecting on the elements of the communion service, speaking of our sin and need for God's salvation. This series will run through the end of our Lenten season this year, and there are cycles through the prayer book, services about sin, grace, and faith. And this first part of the cycle in the communion office is the Collect for Purity. Let us meditate upon this prayer, asking God's help to deliver us from our sins. No one can hide from sin and, or, or from God. First, this prayer speaks to the truth that we cannot hide our sins from God. It says, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. The prayer in the Sarum Missal, the Latin service used in England prior to the Reformation, and the English prayer book states, O God, to whom every heart is open and every desire known, and whom no secret escapes. The placement of this prayer is one that from the outset of the communion service prepares our hearts by reminding us that before Christ saved us, we were lost in our sins, and this forms the very core of our being. 
This truth of our sin does not just deal with what can be seen from the outside, but from the very heart, what only God can see. We need his intervention because we are lost in our sins and cannot hide them or wiggle out from their consequences. He sees us no matter how much we do not like it. With our propensity to sin, we are very good at acting as if all is well inside, making a show for others to see what we want them to see, hiding all that is amiss within. But we can't do this with God. A healthy spiritual life in Christ is one that is more and more driven away from our hiding sin to being willing to repent and submit to the light of Christ to expose our darkness and dealing with it through God's forgiving grace. We are taught this sanctifying work in the invitation to the general confession in morning and evening prayer. It says that we should not dissemble nor cloak them, our sins, before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. It is healthy to acknowledge our sins, to be open and honest to confess them, and ask his power to aid us in rejecting them all our days. It is liberating to acknowledge his sovereignty over all human beings. None of us is too small for him to know the thoughts of our hearts. As Jeremiah 16, 17 states, For my eyes are on all of their ways. They are not hidden from me, nor is it nor is there iniquity hidden from my eyes. Further, Psalm 90, verse 8 relates, You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. To own the fact that he knows all, each and every one of us as individuals, is to submit to him and be prepared for the next part of the colic for purity, which is his cleansing work of our hearts. We pray, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. Have you ever had to clean a room used for a long time without any cleaning as the person goes about their life? Say, for instance, a kitchen. Maybe a person has let themselves go for so long that the room from top to bottom is absolutely filthy. The person keeps using it to the point the filth and mess has become so normal to them that they don't notice it. Often in such situations, it takes an outsider to come into their life to issue a wake-up call so that they can no longer hide the mess. God does the same for us for the state of our hearts, revealing how corrupt our lives have become and we're mired in sin. The outsider sees the state of our life, of our filthy kitchen, and instead of telling us, get this cleaned up now, the refrain, rather, is to come to God, to ask for his help, to ask the outsider to cleanse us from within. Then the outsider does something that utterly humbles and relieves us at once. They hear our plea to clean us, and he cleanses us from within perfectly and completely. We are delivered from the filth we had become callous towards through cleansing us, cleansing the kitchen that was foul beyond compare. The act of cleaning us to the point we are now acceptable forever before God as his children is truly wonderful, truly liberating. It is something we could not do for ourselves. We needed outside intervention. This intervention, this cleansing, was a deliverance from our sins that Jesus accomplished for us with his finished work on the cross. In our reading today from Daniel 3, we read of how God saved Daniel's three friends from death in a furnace due to refusing to obey the king to worship false gods. As the friends said to the king in verse 17, If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. As God's people, we know our only hope is God's intervention in our lives to save us from the eternal consequences of sin through Christ. And the words here, these men said that even if they would not be physically delivered, that God alone was who they served and no one else. Our sole fidelity to God is our call, no matter what man does to our bodies through persecution. Ultimately, we are saved eternally in Christ. 
forever delivered from the eternal fires of damnation through the work of Christ. In this deliverance, our hearts are cleansed. Verse 25 records what happens after the three are tossed into a furnace that was stoked to be several times hotter than normal due to the king's rage at the men's for their faithfulness to God. But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. The Lord delivered them from the fiery furnace, thwarting what a sinful man meant for evil. His work on their behalf proved he cares for his people, that he intercedes on our behalf to take the just penalty for our sin upon himself so that we may live. Throughout this life in service to Jesus Christ as Lord and King, he is with us via the Holy Spirit, ever present with us through all we face. His presence is much like the fourth man seen in the furnace with Daniel's three friends preserving and cleansing us to grow in him as we are prepared for the resurrection of our bodies on the day of judgment to enjoy him forever. His victory over sin and death is complete, preparing us for the daily call in which we must live for him, to be sanctified by him, and to spread his gospel to the ends of the earth. In this victory, we are continually brought up and fostered in his ways through his holy word, his church, his worship, his sacraments, all through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And his cleansing enables us to love and worthily magnify him. His work in knowing us and cleansing us leads us to the last part of the colic for purity, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Christian life in Jesus Christ is a service of love for him and for all people friends, and enemies. We cannot say that we love God if we do not love our neighbors. God's work in bringing us to the realization that we cannot hide from him and thus cleansing us is something we remain grateful for throughout eternity and day by day. Our love for God and reply to his great work for us is realized in worthily magnifying him in our worship, both in our divine, in divine service and through all that we do in life to his glory. Even before Daniel's three friends were thrown into the furnace, they lived lives of loving gratitude and service to God. As Daniel 3.12 states, These men, O king, they pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you set up. They did this out of love for God, out of an inheritant obedience to God's law. There is a common misconception, a heresy really, that teaches if we have enough faith that nothing bad will happen to us. Look at, looking at what scripture teaches, these ideas are clearly false pipe dreams that only end in people becoming disillusioned when they hit the reality of life. That the world, the flesh, and the devil abjectly hate Christ and his people. Jesus told us this would happen and that in suffering for his sake, we would be blessed in him, preserved by him for all eternity. This loving trust the free three friends of Daniel exhibited is not something we boast about or think is from an inner strength independent from God that we can muster. His strength is granted us by his grace, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's how we face the hardships of this life in service to Christ alone forsaking all others. As we read in the epistle, St. Paul faced false teachers at Corinth that trusted in their own works to the point that they boasted about them to lure people to serve them. In this endeavor, they were no different than what the king of Babylon commanded, to serve others in rejection of God. The false teacher boosts themselves to look good, hiding all within, to bait people to believe their lies and serve their needs. Their so-called works were only seen as ways to build up clout and garner others to serve them. In contrast, St. Paul in the epistle outlines all good, that all good deeds we accomplish are not ours to boast about, but rather occasions in which we thank God in loyal and humble service to Christ alone. Our good works, our loving service wrought by his deliverance of us, 
are to glorify Christ alone and to bring each other up out of loving joy or to build each other up out of loving joy. The colic for purity serves as a weekly reminder via prayer for us to prepare our hearts to enter worship. We enter knowing we cannot hide anything from God, that he knows us fully. We enter knowing he alone cleans us from a status which we were incapable of cleaning ourselves. Thus, we enter worship knowing that for the rest of life, we are reminded of his cleansing work that in turn brings us to a constant state of gratitude, and that enables us to keep submitting to his work within of cleansing, preparing, and inspiring us to love and magnify his holy name. May this be so in our midst. Amen. Oh. 
things come of thee, O Lord. And those thy hands have been given thee. Christians of other branches of Christ's church who have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit are affectionately invited to the Lord's table. Let us pray for the Holy State of Christ's church Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. We grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers so that that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. <clears throat> Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee, O thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear, <clears throat> beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. And make your humble confession to Almighty God without me. <laughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. Thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You're also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Give 
thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and presume to come, to come to this thy table, O oh merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, are <clears throat> not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who may there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, <coughs> and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
takest away the sins of the world. Come, all is in thee grace.
What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me.
power on earth and in heaven is a shadow in his light. No authority, law, or government challenges his sovereign might. His reign and rule have no boundary. All that is his hands have wrought. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. We are well aware we were orphans once, bent and broken in our shame. Then he sought us out and adopted us. Now we bear his royal name. Every sin or crime we have ever done is no match for Jesus' blood. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. We are rescued out of the darkest night, free from Satan's evil hold, and the King. is our soul's eternal home. Though the enemy tries to steal and kill what the death of Christ has bought, nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our Christ is King, for He conquered death once for all. We will walk in light of His victory, following His gospel call. And when the story ends, we know Jesus wins, for His power cannot be stopped. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. Deep cry. 
servants earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion and here we offer and present unto thee O Lord ourselves our souls and bodies to be a reasonable holy and living sacrifice unto thee Humbly beseeching thee that we and all partakers of the Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate and the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please turn to number 521 in your hymnals as we sing the Shrove Tide Shrove Tide hymn. Singing verse 2.
peace of God and pass of all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 581.